today we have uh, Tom Tom Myerskoff, right? Myerskoff, yep. <coughs> Who's uh, now Tom? Are you president or Mark's president? Because I was going to say that the org, the org chart says different, so <laughs> so <coughs> so I'm going to leave it as Tom and Mark show, and it's president and vice president. They can decide who's going to uh, wear the uh, the wings. Um, they are uh, representing the community and Children's Safety Village of Haldeman, Norfolk, and this is uh, an update to Council. Yes, sir, it is. Thank you very much for inviting us here today. Uh, we're glad to report to Haldeman Council as to how we're doing. For those that do not know about our safety village, we'll give you a very quick uh, rundown on how it, what it is and how it works. Push the button. There we go. Uh, the Community Children's Safety Village is a not-for-profit organization. Uh, we're registered and we're uh, all ready to go. We've been established since 2013. We are providing the highest quality education available with a hands-on uh, process. Okay. Next. You'll get it in a minute? Okay. <laughs> we like to look after people every every one from the ages of two to 102 because safety doesn't stop with, ch with kids in school. It doesn't stop with their preschool. We're finding now that seniors are really uh, starting to come up on the charts. We have one uh, stat from the Haldeman Norfolk Health Department. Back in 2016, there was approximately over 2,000 children from the ages of three to nine administered to, through our hospitals, local hospitals, through the emergency rooms for an overnight stay or maybe longer. And that was due to because of uh, playground injuries, car accidents, fires, choking, things in the home. Also with our seniors due to medications, falls, things like this, we want to make sure that everybody is safe. <clears throat> oh yeah, and if you go to uh, YouTube at this website that we have up here, it's of a uh, safety village in Ontario. And it's roughly a two-minute run, and it'll tell you all about our safety or how the safety village operates. There's so much that kids need to know up. these days yeah. to keep themselves safe. It's coming up on safe. here, but it's not coming <laughs> up there. Safety, up there. bullies, strangers. Here? But what about the basics? Tell me. A difficulty. I will now. forget. Show right, me. We'll, we'll avoid that. Yeah, we'll go on to our next slide. Maybe just a minute. I don't want to close everything out here and lose it. Technicals. Our proposed location is at 678 North Nanticoke Parkway in Jarvis. Uh, Council, Haldeman Council has set aside this property for us and we are busy, busily trying to raise money so that we can pay for this property. We are just about there. We haven't been sitting around doing nothing. We're making sure that this is going to happen for us. This is a proposed site. If you see, there's small buildings in the back, and the small buildings for advertising. So we'll say Tom's Repair Shop wanted to have a building back there. It would cost him X number of dollars to have that building, and it would be for 15 years. That would include all his maintenance, the sign, everything would be on that building. Does it serve a purpose? It's just for advertising. Our larger buildings that we may put on there could be for storage, but it's mostly for the advertising so that we can, that's how we keep the funds going for our village. Why did we choose Jarvis? Well, former counselor told me that it was the central of the universe. <laughs> I thought Dover was, but I guess not. But anyway, Jarvis is right in the center. As you see on the travel times from Tilsonburg all the way down to Cuga, Dunville, it's <clears throat> right in the center. It's within 45 minutes to an hour. And the reason that we chose it was because we're thinking about the kids on the buses. <clears throat> once, a kid, once a child's on the bus for 45 minutes, well, you know what it's like when you take your grandkids for a drive, how much longer? Well, that's what it's, what it's like on a bus. Our philosophy, tell me and I will forget, show me, I may remember, involve me and I will understand. You know, it's like if you tell your children something, your grandkids something, they'll forget within 10 minutes. You show them 
what's going on, they could possibly remember it. But if you involve them, they will understand. And that's the most important part. <coughs> Our mission statement is to pr provide the highest quality safety education and training available. This is going to be done through the fire, EMS, and OPP. They're the experts. They're going to be doing it. The effort is going to be enable children and citizens to help and protect themselves and others from accidental death, injury, and destruction of property. Project support. Haldeman EMS, Fire, OPP, Grand Haldeman Norfolk Catholic School Board, Grand Erie District School Board, Mississauga of the New Credit, community service groups throughout Haldeman and Norfolk counties. Tom, what, is there, when you say Haldeman OPP, is it Norfolk as well? or there, there We are in uh, works with reestablishing, getting Norfolk and uh, on, back on board with us. Uh, it's been a long process but we are very hopeful that this is going to happen very soon. Okay. Change, change in command, right? It's Big it's time. Instigate a lot of that, so. Okay. Yep, Re reconnecting with those uh, in charge and hopefully uh, getting the support, which it's a, it's a formality in most cases, but you just have to go see them again and say, right. okay. Okay. So. Fundraising, local business, service clubs, corporate sponsorship, community support, individual donations, grants, municipal, provincial, federal government funding, and you. As you said, we are registered with the Canada Helps so that people can donate online. Community support, building sponsors, as I mentioned earlier. A person can purchase a building for, and our prices are between $15,000 and $25,000. And it goes all the way down to engraving patio stones. So we have everything in place. If somebody wanted to do, donate benches, if they wanted to donate street signs, have a room named after them, everything is covered for a price. Even streets, if you want to you know, give us a nice dollar, we'll, uh, we'll put your name on a street too. Like Ken Hewitt Parkway, I can see it now. <laughs> <laughs> Building project steps. This is what we've, we are following. We acquire the property. Building the safety village. Acquire equipment needed for the village, establish programs, and grand opening. It's a large, large, large process. And because we're part of a, a larger group, it's a North America, actually, worldwide organization with the safety, safety village. So we're not the only safety village in the world. And we get to learn from their mistakes and their advice when it comes to uh, going through these steps. And that's where these steps come from, is uh, through the other safety villages. So. That's what we're kind of following because there's no sense in reinventing the wheel when they've already been through it. They're, they're giving us great advice on, on these steps as well. And why are we having one in Haldeman, and Norfolk? For the children from Dunville to go to Welland? Welland doesn't have the time now. They're way too busy. Brantford has a safety village. It's getting way too busy as well. But Brantford is also looking for a location. They have to close down their site because new property owners came in, they gave them a deadline. If you don't find a site by this date, sorry, we're coming in with bulldozers. So they're kind of in the same place that we are right now, but we're one step ahead. We have our property. The same thing uh, for the uh, west end of uh, Norfolk, they head to London if there's uh, availability. So they run their programs for their areas first and then when our schools contact them, if they have space for them to get in there, then they can go. But uh, we also get into the expense of the busing. Once you go outside of the county um, or counties, it gets very expensive for the schools and there goes uh, their busing budget very quickly if they start running up to outside of the areas. And uh, of course, uh, Brantford is uh, still within the area, but now they're running into the, uh, the financial, not so much financial, but the land uh, issues that they're now running into. And again, they are running at max. Together we can make a difference in the life of a child. That's our goal. We want to make sure that every child in Haldeman Norfolk is safe. So where we are right now in the, uh, um, as part of uh, today's presentation as well, is the, uh, we've got the land entrusted to us, held by county. Um, we're working on the uh, funding for that. And as Tom said earlier, we're approximately halfway there, um, which uh, we're hoping to uh, meet all the deadlines and, and uh, continue on. Uh, it's, uh, as it's a uh, not-for-profit, we know it's a challenge. 
you know, two steps forward, one step back, but uh, we are progressing. If you'd like to go to our website, it's safetyvillagehn.ca. Uh, it's up and running now. It's a beautiful site, and we're really proud of it. Questions? Great. Thank you. I got Dan and then Bernie. Um, great idea, guys. And I, you know, if we can add something more for the children in the county, it's there's never enough, right? Um, just curiosity, ballpark. What's your, what's your budget for? Coming in, to I'm glad make you're it all sit, I'm, I'm glad you're sitting down. It's three. <laughs> it's three point five million dollars. In that, it is covering all our engineering costs, which is approximately three hundred thousand um, dollars. Two years running, all our buildings, all our equipment. That's turn the key. We're in operation, ready to go. What kind of recreational facilities will entail in it? Like other than obviously gymnasium and that sort of thing. Well, a majority of it is. Uh, school, but because we have the gymnasium, we can adapt to just about everything. Um, one of the things that uh, we're going to be able to do is a lot of the programming out in the village itself because we actually have the streets. So we can, when we're talking about the safety, we're looking at instead of the as many of the uh, safety villages use as the Peg Perego battery operated cars, uh, we're not going that route. We're going to a pedal powered co uh, go kart kind of a thing. Um, so they get the exercise as opposed to riding around in, in battery operated cars. It's something different. A lot of kids don't have those. Um, I've, we've been to a few of the safety villages now that have actually started to implement because now it kind of fits in with the physical education portion of the curriculum, which our programs, all of our programs meet with the Ontario curriculum and things that have to be presented. Now we're presenting it in a professional manner, so which works out really well. So we have that, but we're also um, open to just about any type of uh, group that uh, wants to come in. We'll adapt to uh, that group if they want to in our gymnasium, well, let's do a uh, evening basketball uh, program or base, sorry, not baseball, not in the gym, um, volleyball, those kind of things, uh, things that will involve the communities and not just Jarvis, but everywhere, um, as well as we're looking at, you know, um, weekend, the uh, outdoor movie theater, uh, car shows, kids uh, activities in the summertime, kids camps in the summertime. Um, because we've established our uh, website already, we've had one camp that was in their plan and wanting to come see us. Um, we said, sorry, but we'll, we'll let you know when we have that facility. We're just in the, the planning stages. So we know the camps uh, will be uh, regularly pr uh, visitors of ours, um, along with a lot of other agencies. Um, because we have uh, Stelco Hydro, no, sorry, not Hydro, uh, SO. In the areas, they're always looking for different places to go to, as a uh, team building, team building exercises, just a meeting room someplace different. So that's also what the uh, the village will be used for. Okay. All right. If I may, when is your golf tournament and where is it? <laughs> <laughs> Our mini putt tournament. Mini putt. Mini putt. We changed the uh, format a little bit this year. It is June first. Nope. No, no, June seventh. Excuse me, it's June seventh. Sorry, Councillor, uh, at Arbor Town in Port Dover. It the cost is a hundred dollars per person, and then you get your full eighteen holes of golf, and also you get a Erie Beach uh, smorgasbord with that. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions? Um, just through you, Mr. Mayor. I know in the, uh, the, the last uh, report that went to Council, we spoke about October as being sort of a deadline coming in with your operational budget and your plan, um, so, and, and the firm bis or business plan of, of moving forward. Uh, you're at, almost at your halfway <laughs> mark of, of fundraising now of the $3.5 so that's substantial. No, the, uh, we're the halfway mark to paying for the property. The purchasing oh, property. Yes. Oh, for the property purchase. Yes. Okay, yes. Sorry so about that. My, my bad. Because we're we're in that time frame of trying to you know take the steps. Yes. You know get that property, secure the property, pay for the property, and keep moving on. Okay. Um, as we see with the investors and whatnot, every time we went back, you know, went to them and say, well, where are you going to be? We're saying, well, we're hoping to be in Jarvis. And then last year when we came here before council and uh, had the property set aside, that gave us more ammunition to go back to those sponsors. Uh, uh, proposed sponsors and so it's slowly coming forward okay. which is giving us you know that that's where we're at that half you think by october you'll be in a, plan, a position to give a, a 
a defined. Okay. Yeah. We are that, very hopeful okay. that we will be at that. I just point want everybody just to be aware, well. kind yep. of what the parameters, so, so that there's no misunderstandings and. Right. We're not going to sell the land from underneath anyway, <laughs> but just so that we're, everybody's just aware of where we are. I just want to be clear of that. So. We have people um, on our committee that is uh, applying for grants constantly. Yeah. We are constantly writing letters to uh, corporations <laughs> so that we're not sitting back hoping that somebody's just going to open their wallet and give, them, yeah. give us the money like we were working very hard towards that. It'd be nice if anybody wanted to. <laughs> we're not going to turn it away. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, I, do I have a motion received? <clears throat> Mark, Tom, thanks for, for bringing us an update. And I, I know it's a, it's, a, it's a big task that you have taken on and, and uh, uh, certainly one that's going to be a positive to both, community, both, both counties. And so hopefully uh, people will get behind it and, uh, and support uh, and we'll uh, not only see you back here with a, an update, but a, a, a celebratory one that says yes. that uh, we're off to the next chapter. So uh, I need a mover and a seconder that the correspondence and presentation material from Tom and Mark uh, with respect to the Community Safety Village of Haldeman, Norfolk, an update to Council be received as information. Councillor Shirton, Patterson, all in favor? That's carried. Great, thank you. Thank you very thank much, you. Council. Thank you. Back to page 41, uh, it's a staff report with respect to the financial and data services and uh, good thing we saved this for after lunch. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, <Really? coughs> the funny thing is I, I'm not going to be up here very much. I know I say that all the time. but. Uh, uh, in your package, there is uh, the 2018 annual report for a financial and data services uh, division, or department, sorry. Um, I am going to be very brief as I'm going to call on Shar and Wilmana and give them their opportunity to go over their various divisions. Um, as you can see from our org chart, that's the primary uh, areas with under, under financial and data services. Uh, there's another box up there that I, I do like to point out that, uh, you know, systems controls, audit security. So security, again, definitely uh, as, as council is aware, you see in the newspaper, uh, security over systems and data is very important in today's day and age. So we are charged with that responsibility as well. We are hopeful in the future as well with our new systems and software, we can start doing some value added uh, auditing as well moving forward on an activity based costing basis to help uh, find other efficiencies within the county as well. A couple of quick things I want to point out uh, before I pass it over to uh, to Tashar. Um, uh, this, this graph and this chart, I've included it. Uh, obviously, this includes all of the county's expenditures, but I did want to take this opportunity to point out, uh, I know this is for the public, this is on our website. It is a, a page that we direct uh, taxpayers to quite frequently, uh, actually, just to show where all the dollars go in, 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 uh, on an annual basis. And you can see on the uh, sort of left side, uh, the operating budget and aggregate between the tax, operate, tax supported operating and the rate, you're looking at $130 million annually. You add in the capital budgets, another approximately 35 million, you add about $165 million annually. Um, you know, so it is a very significant budget. Um, you can see there are fluctuations, particularly on the capital side, depending on, particularly on the water wastewater side, we're doing plant upgrades. And actually, in 2016, uh, we had the double hit. That's the actual year we budgeted for the min facility as well as the uh, software upgrade. So you know, the capital can fluctuate, but you can see on a consistent basis, the operating is going to increase and you're in, in excess of $130 million from an operational perspective. And then just sort of within the division specific lender uh, financial and data services, under the, the MIN, the, actually the largest portion under the MIN, because there are some, some weird areas that fall under these uh, divisions for financial responsibility. Uh, so under the MIN side of, to, uh, is the impact costs, or annual impact costs are, are part of the costs administrated under the MIN side. It's about uh, $717,000 annually. And on the, on the finance side, so that isn't all costs related to the finance department, a large portion of that relates to the financial administration with respect to water and wastewater. So the transfers to reserves, the, the annual billing costs, all those costs are, are administrated financially uh, by the finance division. Um, and then also, also all the tax, uh, tax and uh, unallocated areas are administrated by finance. 
IS is, uh, is all uh, IS related, uh, but as you can see, a lot of the IS costs get transferred back to the other divisions, particularly the ones that have uh, grant financing. So we make sure we maximize our grant returns and or cost sharing with other, other municipalities uh, in that area. Uh, quickly in the bottom with the staffing side of it, uh, you can see in the last couple of years there have been some increases and we tried to put some little notes in there as to what was going on in those particular areas. Uh, both because of the of the BAS, both in the finance and IS, there are some temporary uh, BAS backup positions uh, dealing with the implementation of the software, as well as with the reorg in uh, 2018. Uh, you can see we took the administrative assistant out of the finance area, uh, put it into the administration area, and, and added the uh, the GM as myself as well, and that was part of the overall reorg uh, in late 2018. So as I said, I'm going to be quick. I'm going to pass it on to Shar, and she'll go through her area. Nobody believed him when he said he'd be quick. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't believe myself. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't want to work. Apparently, I'm not going to be as quick. Okay, I'm just going to speak briefly to uh, some of our 2018 highlights. Um, the finance division um, completed our asset management financial reporting for our asset categories in order to meet our federal gas tax requirements. Um, as well, we were uh, key players in the implementation of our uh, business application software, and um, specifically for phase one during 2018. Um, during 2018, we had our general ledger come online, um, our accounts receivable system, property tax, accounts payable, and our cash receiving. As well, we initiated the um, development charges bylaw update that you saw come to uh, completion in spring of 2019. Um, we had a more focused effort during the summer of 2018 on our property tax collection, given that we do have um, a fairly significant, a high percentage of arrears, and I'll get to that when I get to the next page. Um, we also had, <clears throat> excuse me, we also had improved cash management and policy procedures. Um, that were uh, a little enhanced and we moved an additional 660 payments to electronic funds transfer and we also increased our uh, pre-authorized payment for taxes by an additional 261 property owners. As well, early in 2018, the Hydro Legacy Fund um, policy was established and that resulted in um, some retroactivity for recording uh, the Hydro Legacy Fund in 2017 year end. <clears throat> This next uh, slide simply covers our um, current org chart, not the org chart from last year. Um, we have 15 full-time people and we have um, a great group of summer students working with us this year if you've happened to see them around. Our 2018 property tax levy was almost $64 million and that resulted in about 22,300 properties being billed. In 2018, for water and wastewater metered revenue, it was about $12 million, um, and that was on average about 9,680 um, customers billed. Total combined operating budget is set, was $75.8 million. <coughs> Our accounts payable staff um, had some significant changes in regards to the BAS implementation. Um, but continue to process significant amounts of invoices. Um, but most importantly on here, our automatic deposits did increase, as I had mentioned. Um, accounts receivable, we on average processed about 374 invoices per month. And in regards to property taxes, our um, tax accounts in arrears are, are about 14%. But when we look at our actual dollar value that's in arrears, um, it is slightly below 10% for 2018, um, so it tells us there's a lot of uh, smaller amounts owing in, that, uh, in the number of properties. There's about 16% of our payments come through from mortgage companies and um, about 47, 4,800 through pre-authorized payment. And as I mentioned, that did increase in 2018. There's some... Uh, changes related to our audited statements um, that you would have noticed when we brought those forward last year. Um, increase in our financial assets, that's mainly due to our investments. Um, also an increase in our liabilities because we issued some significant debt in 2017. 
For 2019, um, we've got an aggressive plan in front of us. We've already um, reviewed the development charges update. Um, we're not we still have to deal with any changes that come out of Bill 108, though, in, in regards to that. Um, we're hoping to develop some standardized industry water and wastewater capital cost sharing agreements in conjunction with the engineering division. And as well, our business, off, business application software development is continuing, so um, we have a lot of work yet to do in that in regards to um, just finalizing some of our things in phase one in regards to accounts payable and accounts receivable and making some of those enhancements for property tax billing as well phase two um, will be assisting with the accounting side of the payroll um, process and some inventory and um, tangible capital assets and our asset management plan as well we um, the business application software development involves um, a new budgeting software so the budgets that you saw this year um, our expectation is when you see your 2020 budgets you'll see a significant change in those as well we were hoping to update the uh, cost of development model um, unfortunately that's been put on hold due to the potential changes for bill 108 so we're hoping that uh, our uh, MFOA does end up updating that once we know what's um, how it's proceeding as well we are reviewing our processes for reporting and evaluating some of our capital assets um, we're reviewing our payment options for supplies and utilities to hopefully um, make some improvements in regards to that and as well we need to implement prompt payment terms for the construction act by October 1st so that'll be um, in conjunction with the procurement area and that's it Yes, I'm, I'm very confident with the uh, service that is be pro provided by our financial department when I see that uh, we survive from the loss of OLG funding and also the 600 jobs. And to see that come about with the uh, financial position to allow us to go ahead with advancing the granular uh, conversion program. The only area that I like to delve in is something I sent you a note on is that uh, uh, tax arrears and POA arrears, and if you could comment on the challenges of provincial funding reduction. First of all, I realize that when we're talking about percentage, we're talking about percentage of accounts. Have we any idea, is it mainly residential, farm, or is it accumulation of everything? Where do we stand as far as other municipalities? <coughs> and I know you have an aggressive program to uh, try to recover these costs, and then with the POA, is that considered a, as part of our outstanding account? Number of questions. Okay. So in regards to our property tax arrears, um, the number of accounts sit uh, at the end of 18 at about 14%. Um, the actual dollar value that the property owners owe us at December 31st um, is a little bit less than 10%. We are higher than the provincial average. Um, I think that was brought forward when we did the BMA study. Um, and, we are, and we are higher than the provincial average, but I think the um, change in legislation and when we went to a two-year plan last year of, of collecting arrears that were two years old rather than three years old that has made a change so we're hoping that um, hoping to bring you back a statistical report um, probably probably after the summer break um, and to update you on our tax pol our tax sale policy um, and the status of it at that point in time and um, the numbers will be a little bit a little bit better there so that's in regards to the tax arrears provincial offenses fines um, are not recorded in the county's books as receivable based on the way the province deals with it we do have the ability to add some fines to property taxes but only under specific circumstances so we've done that um, only on a few occasions so that does not impact our tax arrears and your crystal ball looking at the provincial cuts I understand we have a stay in it but looking down the road what do you see percentage reduction and what we have to pay for a raise yeah um, I would 
I would, I'm not going to answer that because I don't have a crystal ball. <laughs> we do have, we've received uh, very few notifications right now in regards to our 2019 funding and we know um, when we brought the tax supported operating budget to you, we did, um, we had a small reduction in our UMP funding. Um, as well, uh, recently we've received notification that our land ambulance is based on our 2018 level and not what we budgeted for 2019. Um, uh, trying to think, is there any more solid? Uh, through your worship, and I, and I mean, I have been sort of accumulating all the impacts of the budget changes because some of them are more indirect than direct, quite frankly, and, and a lot of the details aren't available as well. So we have been monitoring it. I've been uh, working on putting together a, a very brief memo at this point to council what we anticipate the impacts to, are going to be. You know, most municipalities are saying it's anywhere between two, two to four percent impacts, but I mean, the province keeps changing what's happening and what the details are. So I mean, it, you know, it's, it's like uh, hitting a fly on the wall, uh, you know, with a hammer. Um, so that we will be bringing something forward. Uh, you're right, the recent announcement that some of the rollbacks that they announced for, for 2019 year end in year aren't going to happen now, but that's primarily in the, uh, uh, the public health and child care and uh, um, in the EMS area, um, but uh, in the police. But again, it's very difficult to project it right now because it's a moving, it's a moving target. So we are going to bring something forward uh, in the near future council, very high level where we see some of the impacts are, but we are going to have to be preparing for that for the 2020 budget for sure. If I may, the Premier has indicated that he's looked in the books of municipalities across the province and has indicated there's room for cutting. Do you agree with that? Um, and through your worship, and I think at this level of government, you know, we're, I would argue, the most accountable to the public and the taxpayers, and we do that, I would argue, on a regular basis, and I think that's a lot of the feedback the Premier heard when they, when they asked for this 4% cut on every dollar that, uh, you know, municipalities habitually go through their costs and expenses and, and try to reduce them where possible, recognizing it, it, it's immediate impact to the, to the end payer, like the taxpayer sees it on their tax bill, unlike how it comes through the province in the, in the federal where it's on a, a sales tax basis in a lot of cases. So I would argue the local municipalities are always looking for cost savings and efficiencies and uh, not to say that we can't find more, I, but I think it's something we do on a regular basis. And I think that's the message that uh, uh, just to getting another, back to the province. Another covert opportunity to switch the taxes to the lower level? Um, through your worship, and again, and I, I think a, a number of municipalities have, uh, particularly said this is sort of uh, downloading just on a sneaky way of doing it. Uh, um, you know, any uh, you know cuts by prov the provincial government to the Holman County are, are going to impact the taxpayer, whether it's in cuts in services or increased taxes. Uh, you know, Don's alluded to it. We get over $20 million annually right now from the province. Uh, so any reduction in that uh, is going to have to be dealt with and, and evaluated and how we come up with the uh, to offset those reductions. Thank you. <clears throat> All righty. Information systems. So as uh, technology has an effect on almost everything people touch nowadays, we're a support division that collaborates with all other county divisions. Some highlights from 2018 include uh, the continued upgrades and implementations of our software solutions. Um, Char touched on, a, on the BAS project. Um, the BAS project, Business Application Solution Replacement, it's a multi-year project that encompasses financial, HR, budgeting, um, a lot of other aspects, H, oh, I mentioned HR. Uh, not only that system, but also other systems that we currently have that have to integrate with that. So the IS division is key and to build those integrations as well to, um, to ensure that the sharing of data makes it uh, most efficient for the staff using the systems. Uh, the City View Digital Collaboration Project, that's another multi-year project that's, um, that started last year. It includes adapting to best business practices and workflows in preparation to support digital collaboration, which will include the online submittals and review process so that residents and uh, people can start the, the um, building inspection process and 
planning um, planning area. <laughs> Uh, so that is, that's on the go. Um, Central Administration Project. Uh, the IS division plays a key role in this project as, the as part of the technology leads. Um, other than the Central Administration Project, all other new construction and renovations also includes the collaboration with the IS division for their technology needs. The redesign of the corporate website, that went live in, the, in December of 2018. Um, the redesigned site includes a responsive design, which is an approach to provide the optimal viewing and interactive experience, regardless of what type of device people are using, whether it's a mobile phone, a computer, a laptop, tablet. Um, the website redesign includes the foundation to support current and future online services which is a key focus and vision in line with the CAP project. Um, just an interesting statistic in a survey, once the website was launched, 87% of respondents said they were happy with the new site and preferred it over the, the old site. So that was good news. Uh, the overall technology infrastructure replacement and, and improvements will provide the connectivity resiliency for the county, for county sites such as admin offices, libraries, arenas, Grandview Lodge, as well as SCADA water and wastewater sites. The data center infrastructure upgrade project is part of this and that, uh, that includes the replacement and consolidation of core infrastructure, including main firewalls and routers. Um, that's in preparation for other connected devices, which, uh, which is termed the Internet of Things. On the software side of things, um, support statistics, you can see that the IS division has eight, eight FTEs and three co-op terms. Um, in, for the website, in 2018, we had over one million visits, which is the first year we've had that many. Popular pages continue to be the careers and homepage. Um, you also see that uh, in 2016 there was a jump in the library pages, and that's mainly to do with, or partially to do with the introduction of the My Haldimand wireless or Wi-Fi access. Uh, when people join the Wi-Fi or accept that on their devices, they have to uh, accept the terms and conditions, and that jumps them to the library page. Uh, visits to the website with some type of mobile device continues to increase as well. Uh, it was up to 58.5% of the sessions. As compared to 2014, it was only 30%. Um, for the first quarter of 2019, we did a quick statistics. We had a 9% increase of traffic on the new site as compared to the, the same time period in the first quarter of 2018. Direct visits to the home page was 96,132 in the first quarter of this year as compared to 21,000 in 20, 2018. Uh, as far as uh, service requests, um, the IT help desk requests have increased, continue to rise, and these requests come in from staff via phone, IT tickets, or email. So on the um, sort of the hardware, the storage type statistics, uh, we continue to provide Wi-Fi access for both internal staff and the public. In 2013, we had 16 wireless access points. That's up to 98 Wi-Fi access points now. And that is going to continue to grow, not to only allow the public to connect to Wi-Fi, but also providing wireless access to internally in the new central admin building for staff and visitors. Um, that is really giving the enabler to allow our, our uh, workers be mobile with portable technology. Uh, data usage uh, storage, the storage continues to grow. Um, as you can see there, we have 43.1 terabytes of total data storage. Um, that is, is always backed up. That is also, a good chunk of that is also replicated at our disaster recovery site. And so using the underlying infrastructure that we talked about earlier to, to connect those sites. Oh. Uh, uh, Wilma, what, yes. what do you, 85% of incoming 
messages are blocked. Can you, like, yep. what does that mean in layman terms? Um, so I was just getting to that one. Good question. Oh. Good question. So our external email statistics, so when somebody from the outside, not internal Haldeman County staff or council, send, you a mass, send messages to the county, we've received, we receive all these messages from the outside, and our systems are blocking 85% of those that are received. Those, those that come in are blocked because they have viruses, they're spam, there are messages that really aren't intended for somebody at Haldeman County. It's like, it's almost like a tax on the mail server. So, so our, why, why are we getting that many emails? There? That's very common. That's very common. It's, it's pretty much everybody would have that type of statistics. Statistic. Really? Yep. Yes. Yes. So now is that just because Haldeman County's email address is generic, or like it blows me? Like I know myself at home, if I happen to subscribe to uh, TSN or something, then I might get TSN updates or something, but I don't understand why, if we're getting 85% yeah. is blocked, like, so those, those I can't are, get over the number of... That's a good yeah. sign. That, that when yes. We first, remember we first started to, eight years ago, a I lot of always, spam. Geez, we're not stopping enough of this. It was constant. We were getting berated with so much spam yeah. and junk mail. So 85%, mm -hmm. that means that out of the 10, 12 emails you get uh, regularly, you're not getting the, you know, the other 40. Yeah, well, I, I guess don't, I guess what I'm getting at is I don't understand why That's they're sad. even getting to our, originally even getting to our website. Well, it's, it's to the mail server, and it's not uncommon. There's so many things that are automatic out on the Internet. People will just try to pound your... They just go looking for servers to attack. Okay, all right. Attack is probably a strong word, but it... I know what you mean. A lot, of, a lot yeah. of these are just mail that is really not intended for anybody at the county, but it just... They, they got the last part of our email address, the ad, haldemancounty.on.ca, and, and guess, some of these programs or bots or whatever you want to call them they will just attack those addresses sure. okay all right thanks for that that's good so i covered that um <laughs> we support over 800 users that includes uh, approximately 250 volunteer firefighters with numerous connected devices um, including computers phones mobile phones security cameras uh, routers digital displays um, with the internet of things the number of devices is expected to increase dramatically. Um, an example, a really good live example, is the central administration project alone will include uh, a lot of extra devices such as digital displays, uh, security fobs that people will use that will all be controlled somehow through the back end infrastructure, uh, smart lighting, new AV equipment. Um, so a lot of these things, the what you see, we dub the, those things that you see, those devices, we dub that the tip of the iceberg. What typically is not as clear is the remainder of that iceberg. The infrastructure, the security, the monitoring, the database performance, that's all the things that are in the back end or the underlying pieces that provide um, for business uh, continuity. Uh, just a quick example is we monitor in our division, there's 500, we call it 541 hosts, and each one of those we has a bunch of different um, failure points that we deem important to ensure business connect, uh, continuity. There's 28,000 failure points that we are actively monitoring um, every, well, constantly. So a lot of, a lot of things. Um, another component of the IS division includes uh, managing the licenses for software and systems and that chart shows a snapshot of the main corporate systems with licensing information. With the BAS implementation there be changes um, but in total right now we're supporting over 55 different software solutions and some of those are very unique to a business need. Um, a, a, an example is we have a solution that is used specifically for cemeteries. Um, so it's, there's not one encompassing solution you can get at a municipality that covers everything, but we try to get, whenever we look at software, we try to get something that will work with other pieces of software that we have. 
Priorities for 2019, um, again, Char talked about the BAS project. Uh, that uh, includes the payroll component, the, the budgeting aspect, other integrations to other solutions, such as the integration with the property data in the one solution, sharing that with other solutions, such as CityView and GIS. Uh, the central admin, oh, oops, there's a... Next one, central administration project. Again, that's, that's a huge focus for IS, um, including just the design, procurement, implementation of a lot of the technology components, networking, wireless connectivity, um, the completion of the data center infrastructure, ISP redesign, security cameras, um, library self-service hubs is coming on, and the physical move to the office, the new office that that's going to involve IS staff a lot of the time. <coughs> and uh, the last thing here is the enhancements to the new website. Again, preparing for the future online services in conjunction with all the other projects that we've mentioned to prepare for the self-service for the public, so self-service hubs. Very good. Nice. Questions? Concern? I'm just interested in that figure that 80% of, 85% of income messages are blocked. <laughs> yes. So the average person with a computer has all this difficulty? Well, it's, it just, it's different than a home computer. That's, that's the one thing that's really difficult to get your head wrapped around. But because we have a, a corporate domain, it, it tries to, different, bots, search bots out there will try to attack the domain and just send garbage to, to our mail, mail server. So it, if, I guess if you compare it to, like if you have a Gmail account, you have your personal Gmail account, but Gmail is held by a much bigger unit. So G, Google is probably blocking, I'd say, more than 85% of stuff that's not even going to you know, true customer emails. It's their main system is blocking all those coming in. It, again, it's just, it's garbage. It's garbage coming in that's, for some reason, whether it's viruses, it's, it's not meant for anybody. It, that's, that's the world of technology. <laughs> so obviously we have a good firewall. We do. Well, we hope to, yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> so good, it blocked half your presentation. Didn't get over this side of the table earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? All right. Done. Thanks, Wilma. Right, Is thank that you. Uh, you, no closing remarks, Mark? No. Uh, thank you for your time. <laughs> <laughs> Are we receiving? Yes. So a mover and a seconder to receive the uh, presentation. Ernie. Uh, um, Steve. <laughs> Steve. Steve. <laughs> Pick Fred. <laughs> Pick one. That was a very heavy lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I guess maybe Mr. Mayor. Uh, uh, Mr. I just say, I mean, one thing about this, yeah. I did, it, because there's a lot of work that goes in it. It's just the scope and scale of what people are doing. And so often people can look at the county and go, Oh yeah, they got an IT and they got some people down there, and it's a it's a massive operation. I mean, you try, and, and the number of things that are coming in, and the, the type of work staff are doing, and the more and more we get into the a lot into the analytics and the, and the big data to just show the scope and scale of what people are doing um, uh, within these areas, uh, and that's hopefully you're able to share this when you go. As you mentioned uh, this morning about going out to chambers and BIAs. These are stats and information that are, are worthy of sharing. We'll do that on our website as we move forward, and I mean, we'll probably do it in some of our tweets and, and that kind of information. But it really puts into in a sense, the scope and scale of what's taking place on a day-to-day -day basis, um, and, and what you know, what the, the public can oftentimes see is the you know the roads, the garbage pickup, the, the, the drainage, and those kind of things. But what goes in behind it to make it all happen? So, just want to thank staff and Mark for for putting it together and getting more and more analytics that people can hold and touch and get a sort of sense of size, and scope, and scale. Yeah. Well, I think it's a good point. I mean, it's I always look at this thing, and it's great when it works. But we always complain when it doesn't work, and it's all that stuff that's happening behind the scenes that makes this makes thing work. work. <clears throat> Most of us don't appreciate or understand. We just expect it to turn on, and 
and and all them emails that shouldn't be blocked are the ones that we expect to come through. So but, uh, it's uh, it's it's good uh, good on staff, and as Don says, it's a good report for us to to be able to share. So we just need to vote on that. Oh, we do. Yes. <laughs> all those in favor? That's carried. Okay. So we're back to. Uh, Mr. Lawrence. Councillor Lawrence. Yes, this page 165 is a report CLS 06 2019, changes to the meeting management solution. Um, I'd like to open it up uh, for any questions and discussion on the floor. <coughs> Corbett? I see in some municipalities they're going t uh, totally paperless. How far down the road are we with regard to that? And I'm really from the old school night paper. But I guess it uses up lots of trees. Is there any indication <coughs> when we're coming online with that? Um, so through the mayor, we are in the process of moving in that direction. Um, some of the senior management are uh, utilizing the uh, app which which would ultimately be utilized by members of council in a in a paperless world uh, I know you've had the opportunity to also utilize the paperless version so um, once we are sure that senior management have um, have tried it and we've addressed any issues we may anticipate then we'll be moving we're, we'll be looking to move forward with that with council and we would certainly provide uh, training and transition because we want to make sure that this is successful going forward. That being said, though, we have reduced the number of agendas we're printing, so we are certainly, we are always um, looking to be efficient. I find it very easy to take a pen and underline something than to get it online and try to underline it. Well, and ultimately the, the software has similar types of tools available. and. Um, will be utilizing it on these types of devices so you you may find that a little bit easier than what you've been using to this point thank you any other discussion questions okay do i have a mover yeah. councillor corbett a seconder to accept Councillor delmani all those in favor carried unanimously uh, the only other thing we have is uh C.L. Boyle is going to talk about, uh, Don's going to talk about the correspondence with regard to Haldeman Norfolk Housing. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, through the Chair. Yeah, this was a piece of correspondence that was very delayed in getting to us. Um, it's become redundant at this point because uh, the, the process is over uh, within it, but um, uh, with respect to the uh, Norfolk uh, Housing Corporation, I, I met with the CAO, the new interim CAO, uh, Harry Sledge of uh, of Norfolk County and, and, and Kathy Case and myself and Marlene uh, trying to work on a strategy moving forward with the Housing Authority. Uh, we're, we, we are going to schedule a meeting uh, with uh, both CAOs, Marlene and Kathy, myself and the chair and uh, the new CEO of the Haldeman Norfolk um, uh, uh, Housing Authority to, as an introductory. There, there was almost a shareholders agreement done a number of years ago. It was very close to being finalized and, and never did get finalized. Um, uh, we need to, and they need to have uh, rules of engagement in place, but we're going to start off with building the relationship. I think there's um, some need to ensure that the relationship is, uh, um, is transparent and safe, and, uh, and, and because um, uh, Norfolk has a new CEO and, and, and myself is new to this file, uh, with Kathy being new to it as well, or relatively new to it as well, but she's been involved with it in the past, um, of coming together. And so uh, this, uh, this motion that was passed by Norfolk was really uh, to uh, have staff uh, act as a resource, not as a, a directing any of the process, but just be involved in the, in the process as a resource up to the point of selection committee. Um, and that's what their thinking was. Um, and uh, that uh, did not take place. Uh, the Housing Authority has a new CEO, uh, uh, CEO hired in place, and we'll meet them, and I think moving forward, uh, we'll build that relationship up together, and, and I'm hoping that we'll have a shareholders agreement uh, to uh, both councils in the uh, very early fall um, as we work through it moving forward. Councillor Gordon? Yeah, if I may, and I made this comment at the Health and Social Services Advisory Committee, to me, there's a 
perceived a real animosity between the housing corporation and, and uh, social services, and I requested that they get their heads together for the benefit of their community. There's some good people working on both areas. Unfortunately, there should be some working together. And I'm very much in favor of a, a couple of things that should be coming forward. I know in looking at it from the Housing Corporation, they're looking forward to some type of shareholders agreement that they've been working on. And I think it goes back to 2006 where this hasn't been done. You can check that out, that's fine with me. And uh, yeah, I'd like to see it worked on and uh, regeneration, something that should be coming forward to us to deal with those houses that are getting into the shape where it's time to turn them over and what type of plan have we got. We would uh, be losing money if we didn't do something about them and that's something they're putting forward to you. So. If we can resolve this problem, work, get working together, and again, it's, it's, it's recorded uh, in the, our minutes with again, the Health and Social Service Advisory Committee. Real or perceived, let's, let's get it together. Thank you. So we did, so, Councilor Delmar. Mr. Chairman, I guess the only other question that I have is I, I thought, and I, and I agree with what the CEO is saying about your, your staff to staff meeting. I just thought that um, after everything I heard at the advisory committee that the intention was that we would have a joint meeting between the two councils to uh, have a frank discussion about the current state of social housing and what both councils feel about the future direction of social housing. Um, is that going to still happen? Uh, is That's what I thought. I thought that Norfolk was going to be setting that up with us to have a frank discussion about where we're going. That's what I thought I heard at, at, from staff at Health and Social Services. The only communication <clears throat> that I've had from the clerk at Norfolk County is about setting up a joint shareholder meeting specifically to discuss a shareholder agreement. Okay. In addition to this particular um, correspondence that came through as, as the CAO mentioned late. Right. Okay. Um, but I've not had any indication about that type of meeting that you're referring to right now. Certainly not from, certainly not directly to me from Norfolk County. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. No, this is a, I mean, through, the, through the chair, this is a situation that's taken us an awful long time to get to this place. Um, there's been changes in the leadership within Norfolk at the, the CEO level uh, with, with, and within our own organization moving forward and as well as the new CEO at the Norfolk Housing Corporation and uh, in both councils uh, through this past election. So I think uh, both mayors are committed to looking at, at it as both councils are. Um, and I think, but the, the, the steps were coming up to a, a recess, a summer recess in, in, in not that far away. Um, the new CEO uh, doesn't start till I think mid mid June, um, and so they're not on on board. And so um, the the thought process to it was to come together, meet, build a relationship, take the last shareholders agreement that we had that was almost done, and I think most people agreed it just never got signed off. Um, truth that with them, to, you know, to see is this does this meet their needs, and is this because I'm understanding they're wanting to get in a bunch of different businesses. Um, uh, within it and try to just understand so we can c come back and report uh, back to uh, both councils about where where we're at and what direction the shareholders agreement could take place. I mean if it, uh, I talked to Councilor Corbett, uh, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but the last uh, shareholders agreement that was not finally signed, people seem to be happy with, the housing authority seemed to be happy with and I, in my sense was staff felt uh, kind of happy, it just never got signed. It just got left. And so it means just going back to them, I think starting at that level, and then coming back to council to see uh, what their interests are. Because I wanna see, uh, before we get into a bunch of new businesses with housing, uh, that we get a solid foundation in place with the current housing stock we have and, and our rent uh, geared to income that we, we have in place and get that flushed out and, find, and, and support it before we start looking at new businesses to enter into. 
but I want to talk to the housing authority to get where they're at and what their interest is. I don't want to make that call before talking to them to see where it is. If that's their, if they're supportive of a, a phased process, then we'd be coming back to council to say, I think we're pretty close with, with, with the, the, the draft shareholders agreement that was never signed, and we're gonna move forward with that, and maybe in, at the end of year one, we'll review it, and then we'll look into what other kind of businesses we could get into. But there's a whole renewal of the housing stock, uh, who pays, what thresholds they, that we have for decision making within it that we want to set down um, in, in an agreement because um, <coughs> on your behalf, do you want them to have the ability to borrow $25 million to do work? Maybe you'd feel confident enough to allow them to go do it or you might want to, to have them go up to a Two hundred fifty thousand or five hundred thousand dollar level, and anything above that, bring back reports to the, both councils. If you're going to be on the hook for it at the end of the day, so it's taken us twenty years to get to here, almost eighteen years, and we're still in the batter's box. And uh, and so I think we need some time to build the relationship up. And if I thought we could get something by the fall and both councils on board, to me at this stage that would be success. So, Councillor Lawrence, we just need a motion to receive uh, the correspondence, please. Okay. So, can we have a um, mover to accept the uh, number 43 from Norfolk County with Joint Haldeman Norfolk Housing Corporation? Any request? Councillor Corbett, seconded by Councillor Shurton. All those in favor? Very good. Mayor Hewitt. Any reports? Gray? I don't know whether it's reports or announcements, but I'll, I'll take advantage of that. Okay. Uh, June 2nd is the Decoration Day in Dunville, uh, sponsored by Station Number 9. Uh, at uh, certain phases, they lay wreaths at the cenotaph. There's two services, one at Riverside, and then St. Michael's, and next week is Mudcat Festival Week in Dunville. Now that might be an announcement, but that's... That's okay, we'll let it slide. I have more other the, on the other... No. More announcements? Any other reports? None? No unfinished business? So first uh, item under new business is a draft motion um, <coughs> submitted by Council Partisan. You're looking at me like, would you like me to speak to that? <laughs> I will. This, this is the opportunity to. I will. I'll, I will speak to that. Um, is very similar to the one we discussed earlier today. I think it was page 61 of the uh, always stop at Craddock and Lafayette. I've had uh, emails and phone calls from residents further down the street on Lafayette and Marley, which is there's a stop sign at Marley, nothing on Lafayette. Same type of concerns as the one that, that we just approved earlier. Um, on the long weekend in May, I spoke to the probably three quarters to 9% of the neighbors that live on that stretch of road. They're all in favor of it. Uh, the concern is basically the same as, as previous. With the new road being done in Lafayette and the sidewalk uh, being put in place on the whatever side of the road that is, that the kids have to, from the Marley subdivision, the kids have to cross that road. Um, there's concerns about speeding down the road now. They're, they're afraid that when it's redone, it's going to get worse. Um, it's probably, and I don't want to put words in staff's mouth, but it, um, it's probably going to be the same kind of recommendations as we dealt with in the earlier report. Um, that area doesn't meet the warrants to support it, but I think uh, staff can, can come up with the same kind of similar four recommendations that they did for the stop sign at Craddock and Lafayette to support this new one that... I put forward, so I'd like to move that, uh, direct staff to investigate. Seconder? Sense. I'll second. Don't mind. Anything further? All in favor? That's carried. And I have to run. So the next motion is uh, with respect to the uh, funding of local hospitals. And I just want to reiterate and be clear that uh, 
the uh, motion that was uh, brought forward was was not to uh, contravene the original uh, intent or spirit of the uh, intent of supporting uh, the Dunville Hospital uh, from the motion that uh, Bernie brought forward. Uh, it's still our um, intent as council that uh, that that be supported in the 2020 uh, budget and that that we would move forward with those funds and I don't believe that uh, there'd be any reason for the public or those that are involved in particular the board that's here some of the members of the board to think that uh, that would change because in fairness to them of course they've got a plan and and uh, and, and move forward uh, uh, with respect to uh, their uh, their budgets and and, and, and uh, working towards their goals, so I, I want to make sure that uh, it's 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 clear that it's our intent to continue to move forward with that original motion. Uh, but it, uh, from my perspective, uh, and why I I recommended changing the motion slightly was that. Uh, we establish a, a clear policy and a clear vision moving forward uh, to work with our hospitals and, and so that, uh, that we're not um, picking winners or losers and we're not just doing things willy-nilly on the fly, we're doing it with some process established. And so uh, the motion that I had uh, suggested that we, uh, we direct staff to, uh, to bring back uh, into next year's line item uh, a, a process uh, by which we have um, a new line in that budget that supports our hospitals, uh, creating a policy where uh, each hospital may apply for monies uh, for capital related items, uh, not for operating of course, and, uh, and that the funding of that would be determined at that, at that budget time. And lastly, I think it's important to note because it'd be foolish of us and, and, and it would be, I think, uh, irresponsible of us to, to not comment on the idea of what's happening in the, with the province and, and politically that uh, uh, this is a discretionary decision of council and, and certainly not one that locks out future councils, but uh, uh, understanding that, uh, you know, with the downloading and the potential costs that it may impact uh, local uh, taxpayers, as well as social services and programs. Uh, while it is our intent, I think, to follow through with that plan today, it certainly could be a different uh, scenario a year from now or two years or three years in that uh, if the Ford government continues to move along with the, uh, the scalpel or more like a machete, um, you know, to, to, to put those pressures back on us, I think we have to be fair to the taxpayer, fair to the hospitals, and fair to the, to the public that, um, you know, when we're looking at these discretionary items, we have to, we have to consider how we're going to continue to do that if other, other services are going to be cut. So, so I think it's fair to say today we're moving forward with that decision. We will continue to move forward with that decision. We'll direct staff and they'll bring that back into next year's budget and we'll see what the climate climate looks like uh, after that year uh, and I think it's fair to say or I want to make sure that it's fair to leave the members that are here with the board and certainly the Dunville Hospital and the motion that you brought forward Bernie that we would not uh, renege on that uh, that decision and, and, and commitment uh, but that uh, it's our hope to really continue with the idea that it's a perpetual and, and uh, long and on, on going commitment to our hospitals because we all support them for, for obvious reasons. Rob? Uh, yes, <clears throat> just maybe a little further clarification because <clears throat> what I'm hearing you're talking about, it may appear or it's going to appear in a, as a budget item next in 2020, but I'm assuming the policy that's going to be directing that is going to be coming to council in the fall i.e., like, are we going to have that on a, an agenda, the policy that's going to dictate this line item, or, or we're not going to have any more discussion? Like, I'm thinking, no, I, I, I <clears throat> that's I think what I would need some clarity. So, so I think <clears throat> we, we agreed last, last meeting by vote that we would support the initial ask for Dunville mm -hmm. Hospital and that that would come out of next year's budget. 
and at the same time will staff will be bringing forward uh, that in future budgets but also a policy that will define how those funds will be you know, similar to our CIP or CPP program that uh, it we're not going to simply just pass those funds along for hiring a a new admin assistant or for the operations of, of, of whatever program it will be for capital related items uh, whether it's expansion of an emergency services department or uh, a, a new piece of uh, equipment like a CAT scan it'll be for those types of items and I think rather than do that today on the fly I think the intent is is there and staff know the intent is there and they'll bring back that that policy with with some more parameters attached to it. Well, that, that's what I'm kind of looking for because I know we get many asks here at council. So I was expecting maybe at a future CIC, the policy might be becoming in September, October. So we can say either we're on board or not on board for that to be on that line item. So or are we just going to get it next budget? To the, like when are we going to see the policies? What I'm asking. By virtue of the last motion, we're going to be getting this on next budget regardless of the yeah. policy because we've committed Mid to the to Dunville it. Hospital in their expansion of the emergency yeah. service. Okay. So that is going to happen in 20. Yeah. For 21 moving forward, we will have a policy, policy that we will discuss and, and be able to commit okay. to as That's well as, as I say, understanding the climate of the province and whether it's even something we can continue to support for a longer for as long as we hope to be able to do it. Yeah, okay, no, that's good. I, that's the clarity I was looking for because I wasn't sure how, when the policy was coming, what was coming, the chicken or the egg first. Yeah. So that's what I wasn't sure. Yeah, and I, and I don't want, as I say, I don't want to say that that policy is going to obviously preclude the original ask, yeah. which was what we've already committed to. So I want to ensure that's in the budget for yeah. this coming year and we'll have that policy defined as well as certainly a lot, hopefully a lot more clarity from our, uh, our, our Ford government. Yeah, sure. So I don't think I need to read all that out now. Is it the motion's there? So the motion is, is quite straightforward. Now the timing there does say prior to the 2020 draft operating budget. Is it maybe of the saying, policy. So if you if that's why to be we changed. Say during the 2020 budget. Sure. Because I think we bring the ask with the policy at that time. And then if there's we'll have more understanding what's it, going on. Included at that time. Yeah. Council. During, during consideration. All right. So let's move by myself. Looking for a second to that staff be directed report back to council committee during consideration of the draft 20 tax supported operating budget on a policy re future funding of local hospitals. Seconder. Oh. All in favor. That is carried. <coughs> Five. Yeah. Last. Oh, yeah. Got yeah. Two down. I, I see. I see that. <laughs> Want to make sure. <laughs> Might not be a Boston Bruins fan, but I can count. <laughs> uh, inquiries, announcements, Smurdy. Um, <laughs> I, I believe next uh, Friday night you have an EMS. Uh, we do. In Caledonia, EMS recognition night, yes. I have uh, two to make. One is is that uh, I'm happy to say that uh, with the efforts of staff and the OPP and uh, this council that uh, three very unhappy uh, uh, parties were not just uh, charged yesterday but uh, towed uh, from the quarry and uh, were stung for a $150 fee, uh, managed to pay the $150 without getting their car impounded, but uh, clearly uh, they, uh, uh, from their frustration, the message was well delivered and I can't wait for the next sunny day to see those tow trucks out there towing all those cars away and hopefully we'll continue to send that message clear. So. Uh, happy to see that happen. I know that uh, as the residents in the area are happy to see it happen and unfortunately the wheels do turn slow and it doesn't happen as fast as everybody would like but uh, I have no sympathy for anybody who parks their car under a sign that says tow 
car be, will be towed at own expense, and if they continue to want to park under there, by all means, I say stick it right to them. So, uh, Councilor Talmai, just a quick quick add on to your comments. These the, the individuals that you make reference to, they have to understand somebody's going to get hurt there. We're trying to protect the public. Really, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to protect them and the traveling public from getting hurt. Yeah. Well, it's got it's beyond dangerous. that. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's trying to protect, but it's a it's a slap in the in the in the public's face. It's yeah, a slap in the respect, county's yeah. face, the administration. Yeah, and every time I see a car on the back of a tow truck, there, it's us slapping them right back. So I'm very happy to see it, and I have no qualms whatsoever getting <clears> that call. Um, <clears throat> the other one was we had the gala uh, Saturday night. It was uh, uh, well received, well attended, uh, a lot of fun to be had, and uh, we haven't got the total tally up, uh, uh, but we're uh, we're confident it was uh, another good night, and uh, and once we get the uh, numbers, we'll certainly advise council, and uh, we will be planning on making the presentations to to the recipients. We'll be doing that in the uh, usually we do it in September after the summer break, so. So we'll keep you apprised to that. And I didn't say it was the last one this time, so so uh, <laughs> we'll see where it goes. Uh, I'm not sure how much help I'll have if I continue, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll we'll we're, we're not going to close the door on it yet. So any other announcements? None. So on the original uh, agenda, there was no closed session, but we do have an addendum in the folders today. There is one item to be dealt with in closed session. So motion, I don't have anything in here. No, you don't have it yet. Oh, uh, verbal update? No, I've got it, but I, I need it. I'm going to hand it out and then hand it back in. Okay. You don't so have a mover and a seconder that pursuant to section 239 of Municipal Act is amended, council convene a meeting at 219 p.m. closed to the public to discuss personal matters about identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees, one being update, re-health and social services. Mover. Lawrence, seconder, certain, all in favor? <clears throat> That's carried. Yeah, the two of you say, yeah. 